next type of uh, relay induction cup induction type relay is induction cup type relay so construction of this induction cup type relay is very much similar to your induction motor okay so here uh, this is the stator the, this green portion whatever you can see is the stator this stator um, consists of either uh, two poles or four poles or uh, there can be more than four poles in this uh, image you can see four poles okay this is one pole this is one this is one and this is the one okay these are the four poles of the stator okay and um, we, you can see two pairs of uh, coils here this is a uh, coil one okay this is coil one dash okay so coil one is um, is connected to coil one dash this is one pair okay coil two is connected to coil two dash this is another pair so you have two pairs of um, coils here wounded to these poles okay and the rotor here uh, is a hollow cylindrical cup type rotor okay so it has a stationary core this is the stationary core it is a hollow cylindrical um, cup type rotor so the difference between the induction motor and this induction cup type relay is that in the induction cup type relay the rotor core is stationary okay that's the difference the rotor core is stationary and only rotor conductor portion is free to rotate about its axis this is the rotor conductor portion okay this ring type what you can see okay is the rotor conductor portion it is free to rotate about its axis okay so the currents and respective fluxes produced by this pair of uh, coils they will have a phase displacement okay with respect to each other uh, that that phase displacement may be uh, an angle of alpha okay let us assume the fluxes and the currents in this coil uh, okay fluxes in these poles and the currents in these coils have a phase displacement of alpha okay since the fluxes and currents are having phase displacement definitely the resultant flux uh, in the air gap will be rotating okay because of the phase displacement um of the fluxes and currents okay the resultant flux will uh, will be rotating in nature okay so we have already discussed about the induction relay uh, how the torque is induced okay if the phase, there is no phase angle displacement between the fluxes torque will not induce okay so the rotating magnetic field is produced by these uh, two pairs of coils due to this eddy currents are induced in the uh, cup type rotor okay because of these two pairs of coils eddy currents will be induced in the cup type rotor these currents will produce the flux okay so the interaction of these uh, two fluxes or uh, fluxes will produce the torque in this rotor and the rotor will rotate in the same direction to that of the rotating magnetic field okay so a control spring will be provided it is not shown here in this image to hold this uh, this is our moving contact okay to hold initially you know to keep this moving contact away from the these two fixed contacts okay so a control spring is provided and a backstop will also be there uh, which is connected to this uh, moving contact okay so we can call this as the arm okay we can call it as the arm okay attach it to this uh, rotating um, rotor okay so um, since uh, a spring is a uh, spring and a backstop is connected to the spindle uh, this moving contact will not come in contact with this fixed contacts okay if it comes in contact with the fixed contact trip circuit will be closed okay so the operation of this induction relay will be very fast okay the operating time will be around 10 milliseconds okay because of this the rotor is light having very low moment of inertia okay the moment of inertia is of this uh, rotor will be um, very low okay 
So the induction relays are widely used for protecting uh, relays involving AC quantities. Okay, these induction cup type relays are uh, as well as induction relays are usually used for uh, used as protective protective relays involving AC quantities. Okay, so whenever uh, current exceeds the preset value, okay, so whenever normal current is there, the torque produced in the rotor will be um, means the operating torque will be less than the restraining torque. that is uh, holding this spindle in uh, position okay the restraining torque is exerted by the spring that is attached to this um, spindle okay so whenever uh, current exceeds the pre, uh, exceeds the preset value when our fault current is flowing through these coils okay these coils are nothing but relay coils okay so what will happen is the uh, operating torque with, uh, that is induced in this rotor will be will become greater than the restraining torque that is uh, produced by this uh, spin uh, spring that is attached to this spindle okay so whenever operating torque becomes greater than the restraining torque this uh, moving contact will will move towards this fixed contact hence uh, the trip circuit is closed and trip circuit is closed trip coil is energized when the trip coil is energized circuit breaker contacts open okay so so in this uh, uh, induction relays Uh, we can get high speeds low speeds as well as any speed uh, operation can be obtained okay so it depends uh, within what interval of time you want to clear the fault okay so depending on uh, the location of the uh, relay okay so you might be knowing whether severe faults will occur or slowly developing faults some so some faults will be there which will develop very slowly okay so uh, so they will in order to become severe they will take longer time okay so depending on the uh, type of fault the timing of time of operation of the relay can be adjusted okay so the speed of operation of the relay can be adjusted so in the induction relays uh, can be operated at any speed either high speed low speed or require any required speed okay and we can get various shapes of the time with respect to the operating uh, operating current okay or operating quantity okay so uh, this is the operation of uh, the induction cup type relay we have already discussed uh, two more uh, induction relays in the last class okay now let us discuss over current relays so you can see a transmission line on which an over current relay is placed okay so it seems as if uh, the size of the relay is very much larger when compared to these towers but it is not the case in order to understand the concept concept uh, this uh, relay has been enlarged here this is an over current relay which is connected in the uh, transmission line okay so an over current relay is defined as a relay which operates only when the value of current is greater than the relay setting time okay so whenever the relay operating current okay whenever the relay operating current becomes greater than the relay setting time then this over current relay will operate okay so these over current relays are used to protect the equipments of the power system against faults okay so let us see the working principle of this over current relay 
this is the same image it's the closer view okay this is same image i am showing you this is the closer view okay so in an overcurrent relay there will be a current coil okay in an over uh, current relay there will be a current coil so under uh, normal operating condition okay when normal current is flowing through this coil the magnetic effect generated by this coil is not sufficient enough to move the moving contact this is the moving contact okay and this is the fixed contact this fixed contact uh, i'm sorry this is the fixed contact this is the moving contact okay this moving contact is uh, held in position with the help of a uh, restraining uh, a spring here okay this is a restraining spring so this restraining spring will be exerting a re, uh, restraining torque here okay so under normal operating condition when normal current is flowing through this current coil okay so the magnetic effect that is um, generated by this coil it won't be able to attract this um, uh, moving contact towards itself okay if the if it is able to attract this moving contact towards itself then moving contact will come in contact with the fixed contact and trip circuit will be closed okay this image is only to understand the concept this is not a relay of course it's a, it's just to understand the concept of overcurrent relay i'm showing you this we are we will discuss different types of uh, overcurrent relays uh, okay as soon as uh, after discussing different um, what are all the different um, means um, depending on the uh, means depending on time of operation what are all the different types of overcurrent relays depending on function what are all the different types of overcurrent relays we will discuss okay so first of all in order to understand the concept of overcurrent relay i am showing you this image okay so when normal current is flowing through this current coil okay so magnetic effect generated by this coil is not sufficient enough to move the moving contact towards this fixed contact okay so the restraining force exerted by the spring will be greater than the operating force okay so when fault occurs okay under abnormal condition okay current through the coil will increase this current current through this current coil will increase and the magnetic effect will increase and uh, okay so when the magnetic effect increases okay after uh, reaching certain value okay so after reaching the pickup value we can say beyond which uh, the fault current or this increased current will damage the equipment okay there will be the there will be certain limit for the fault current to raise okay so till that uh, limit that fault current will not cause any damage to the equipment to which this relay has been connected but beyond that the fault current will definitely damage the equipment so till that current reaches okay the relay will not operate means the uh, the operating torque will not be, will not will not become greater than the restraining torque okay so when the current through the coil increases the magnetic effect increases and after a certain level of current the operating torque will will be will become greater than the restraining torque when the operating torque becomes greater than the restraining torque what will happen is this uh, moving contact will come in contact with the fixed contact and the trip circuit is closed okay so while discussing about uh, the different types of overcurrent relays uh, uh, with respect to their functions you will be able to understand clearly okay uh, uh, now just understand the concept that's all okay for today's class while discussing in this working principle of overcurrent relay just understand the concept that's all okay in detail with uh, how um, the torque is induced we have already discussed in the case of induction relays okay but the how how the current flows and how the fluxes are induced uh, we will we will discuss in detail while discussing about the functions it uh, means uh, classification of over current relays uh, with respect to the functions okay so when this moving contact comes in contact with the fixed contact trip circuit is closed and the uh, circuit breaker is open 
okay so the working principle whether whatever may be the type of the uh, over current relay the working principle is same for each and every over current relay okay so let us uh, classify this over current relays depending on time of operation okay depending on time of operation let us classify the uh, over current relays so the over current relays are instant relay inverse time over current relay definite time over current relay inverse definite time over time over current relay okay so depending on time of operation the over current relays are classified as instantaneous over current relay inverse over current relay definite time over current relay inverse definite time over current relay idm t okay of course m means minimum time okay so i have not written a, a minimum time here okay so very inverse definite time over current relay and extreme inverse definite time over current relay okay so let us start uh, one by one so first one is instantaneous over current relay so this uh, relay will operate instantaneously when the current reaches a predetermined value okay so we have already discussed if you are regularly attending the classes uh, you might be knowing that uh, in the beginning we have already discussed about the relay current setting how to determine the operating time of the relay we have solved a problem on that also okay so so always a relay will have a uh, pre uh, set value okay so depending on the pre set value or current setting the when that uh, desired current is up reach the relay will operate okay so this relay instantaneous over current relay will operate instantaneously when the current reaches a pre determined value so you can let us uh, let us call that the pre determined uh, uh, value as the pick up current okay so if this ip is the pick up current as soon as the current in the relay reaches this pick up current okay this is current with respect to time the relay will operate okay uh, below, below this current below below ip the relay will not operate okay so the trip circuit is not closed below this ip value if the current reaches current is equal to ip or greater than ip the re, the relay will operate means the relay will trip the circuit breaker okay so circuit breaker contacts are open means uh, in simple words we can say the relay is tripping the circuit breaker okay so this relay will operate in a definite time when current exceeds its pick up value okay its uh, operation criteria is only current magnitude okay the operation of this relay will depend only on the magnitude of the current uh, operating time is constant and uh, there will not be any intentional time delay will not be there okay so it has to do nothing with the uh, time okay so coordination of these relays is based on the fact that fault current varies with the position of the fault okay because of the difference in the impedance between the fault and the source okay so because of the difference between the impedance of the fault and the source this relay will operate okay so there are different types of impedance relays okay we will discuss them later on okay so these relays are usually located farthest from the source and they will operate for low current values okay the operating currents are progressively increased for the other relays when moving towards the source okay these instantaneous relays will be located far away from the source okay which is to be uh, protected okay here source means the equipment or device which is to be protected and uh, in between this relay and the source as we move from this relay towards the equipment which is to be protected few more relays will be there okay, okay. their operating time will be less than compared to this relay so this relay uh, operates usually in 0.1 second or even less because it is instantaneous uh and usually this relay is uh, applied to outgoing feeders okay next is inverse time over current relay 
so inverse time overcome relay will operate for small change in the time per unit of a uh, change of current means as the current vary time of operation of this relay will vary you can uh, clearly understand by looking at this okay so if you see here uh, this is the actuating quantity okay so actuating quantity is the one because of which the current in the um, relay coil will vary okay so um, as the actuating quantity is uh, increasing okay from a to c the time of operation is decreasing see at a at in when the actuating quantity is uh, at uh, at this point a the time of operation you can see time in operating time you can see time of operation is this you see the time of operation is very uh, large okay so as as the actuating quantity has increased means as the fault current has further increased okay you can see the time of operation has decreased okay time of operation has decreased when the fault current has further increased to c up to c point when we reached uh, to this point c you can see the time of operation of the relay has further reduced okay so it has inverse characteristic means as the fault current increases time of operation of this relay will decrease okay so the uncertainty of the operating time and the necessary operating time may require a grading margin of 0.4 to 0.5 seconds okay and it is used when fault current is dependent on generation of fault but not on fault location okay so irrespective of wherever may be the uh, fault has occurred okay whatever may be the location of fault but it depends uh, the operation of this relay will depend mainly on the magnitude of the fault okay so irrespective of the location of the fault Uh, these are uh, most frequently used in utility and industrial circuits okay these inverse time over current relays they are used in utility and industrial circuit these are applicable where fault magnitude is mainly dependent on the system generating capacity at the time of fault okay so we are classifying the relays depending on time of operation okay this is the classification depending on time of operation next type of relay is definite time over current relay okay in this type two conditions must be satisfied for the relay to operate one is current must exceed the setting value okay current must exceed this i a setting current okay so current must exceed the setting value okay setting means relay operating uh, relay will have current setting okay so if the current exceeds that value then only the relay will operate okay so current must uh, current must exceed the setting value and fault must be continuous at least a uh, time equal to the time setting of the relay okay so current should be continuous this fault current okay fault current should be continuous at least a uh, time equal to the time setting of the relay depending on the time setting of the relay it must be continuous okay then only this uh, definite time relay will operate okay so in nowadays many uh, relays are available okay so these modern relays may contain more than one stage of uh, protection each stage includes each own current and time setting okay and for operation of definite so these relays will have constant operating time and its operation is independent of magnitude of current okay for this definite time over current relays will be independent of magnitude of current whether the fault is severe or uh, whether the fault is a low fault irrespective of that depending on its setting okay what our preset current okay setting current is there depending on that if that current the fault exceeds that value it will operate that's all okay so it has a pick up and time dial setting this relay as a pick up uh, value for current fault current and time dial setting will be there i hope you remember time dial setting this is a time dial okay so desired time delay can be set with the help of an time dial mechanism okay you can set the uh, timing uh, of the means um, you can set the time of operation of the relay 
with the help of this time dial okay so this relay definite time over current relay is easy to coordinate and um, and constant tripping time is independent uh, of in feed variation and fault location okay so it it won't uh, bother for what is the magnitude of the fault current and it won't bother for what is the location of the fault current only the thing that it bothers is if the fault is continuous fault and if the fault current has exceeded the setting current setting value of the relay okay then only this relay will operate okay so there are some uh, drawbacks for this uh, relay so in order to um continuity in the supply must be there to maintain uh, uh, continuity in the supply cannot be maintained at the load end in the event of fault okay and uh, time lag is provided which is not desirable in uh, uh, in on short circuits okay there will be time lag in this uh, relay okay means it it won't operate uh, immediately okay so it it will wait till the fault current exceeds the uh, preset value of the relay okay so it is difficult to coordinate and requires changes with the addition of the load okay it is not suitable for long distance transmission lines and uh, poor discrimination means it can't identify uh, the difference between severe fault and low low fault okay so it has poor discrimination and it can't even identify what is the location of the fault but uh, the application of this uh, definite time over current relays are it can be used as backup protection for distance relays for transmission line protection and it can be used uh, is for backup protection for differential relays for uh, power transformers protection and uh, these these uh, definite time over current relays they can be used as main protection for outgoing feeders and bus bars okay next type of uh, relay is uh, inverse definite time over current relay so in this type of relays operating time is inversely uh, changing with respect to the time okay as the uh, current varies okay operating time is uh, changing in uh, with respect to the current so not time okay so operating time will be inversely changing with respect to the current so high currents will operate over current relay faster than the low fault currents okay if fault current is severe the time of operation of this relay will be low okay so the relay operation time is inversely proportional to the fault current here that's why so the operating time of an over current relay can be um, made up by adjusting the time dial setting the lowest time dial setting is generally 0.5 and slowest is 10 okay so lowest uh, time dial setting means the time of operation of the relay will be fast okay so if the time dial setting is high time of uh, the time taken for the relay to operate will be low if the uh, dial uh, time dial setting is low time of operation for the relay will be high so this relay operates when current exceeds its pick up value and operating time depends on the magnitude of the fault current here it gives inverse time characteristics at low values of fault currents and definite time characteristics at higher values of fault current okay so at low values it gives inverse characteristics and at higher values it gives definite characteristics means the characteristics will be almost constant uh, in order to show uh, clearly see this is the definite time characteristics okay this is the okay this is the definite time characteristics so this is uh, the this lower one is the inverse definite minimum time characteristics that's what we are discussing now so at low fault currents it gives the inverse characteristics at high fault current it gives the definite time characteristics so it has both inverse characteristics and definite time characteristics okay so for high fault current it gives the um definite time characteristics at low fault current it gives the inverse time characteristics okay we can even call it as inverse definite minimum time over current relay okay
So, an inverse characteristic is obtained if the value of the plus setting multiplier is below 10. Okay, you know what is meant by plus setting multiplier. If the value of plus setting multiplier is below 10, then you will get the inverse characteristics. And for the plus setting multiplier values of 10 to 20, will give you definite time characteristics. Okay, if you are regularly attending my classes, you might be knowing what is meant by plus setting multiplier. So, it is widely used for protection of distribution lines. Okay, so next one is very inverse definite time over current relay. So, so this uh, very inverse definite time over current relay, it gives more inverse characteristics than that of uh, inverse definite time over current relay. Okay, so. So this, uh, this relays are used where um, there is a reduction in the fault current as the distance from the source increases. Okay, so if the distance of the fault current with respect to the source is increased, then at such locations, okay, these uh, inverse, uh, very inverse definite time over current relays are used, particularly effective with ground faults because of its steep characteristics. Okay, so it, this inverse, uh, Definite time over current relay characteristics are steep characteristics. That's why they are effective for protecting the equipments against uh, ground faults. Okay, suitable if there is a substantial reduction of fault current as the fault distance from the power source is increased. Okay, so um, these are particularly suitable if the short circuit current drops rapidly with the distance from the substation. As the distance from the substation increases, if the short circuit current is decreasing, then these type of relays are suitable for such faults. Okay, so we can provide a grading margin. Okay, uh, time grading. Grading means time grading. Time grading means as uh, we move towards the source, okay, as we move towards the source, uh, which is to be protected, the time of operation of the relay should be reduced. Okay, as we move far, uh, as we move away from the source, then the time of operation of the relay can be reduced. Okay, uh, sorry, it can be it sh it can be increased. Okay, as we move away from the source, the time of operation of the relay can be increased, and as we move towards the source, time of operation of the relay uh, can be reduced. That is known as time grading. In time grading. Time of operation of the relay is uh, varied depending on location of the relay uh, with respect to the source. Okay, that is to be predicted. Okay, so the time uh, the time grading margin may be reduced to a value up to 0.3 seconds to 0.4 seconds when over current relays with very uh, inverse characteristics are used. Okay, these are used when fault current is dependent on fault location. And uh, they are also used when fault current is independent of normal changes in the generating capacity. So next type of uh, overcurrent relay, depending on, which is classified depending on the time of operation is extremely inverse definite time relay. Okay. So you can see here, I I'm showing you the same image. So it is an inver extremely inverse uh, definite time relay, which is having, which is more steeper than a very inverse time over current relay. Okay, it is more steeper. It has more inverse characteristics when compared to the very inverse and uh, inverse definite minimum time over current relay. So this type of in extreme inverse over current relays are suitable for the protection of machines against overheating and the operating time of um, these relays with, with an extreme inverse uh, time current characteristics approximately inversely proportional to square of the current. Okay, so it is inversely proportional to the square of the fault current. Okay, means they will take very less time and compared to the all the other relays to in order to interrupt the fault. Okay, so the use of extremely inverse over current relay makes it possible to use uh, a short time delay in spite of high switching in currents. 
so this type of extreme inverse over current relays are used when um, fault current is dependent on fault location okay and uh, independent of normal changes in the generating capacity and they are suitable for protection of distribution feeders with peak currents on switching in uh, refrigerators pumps water heaters okay so these are particularly suitable for uh, grading and uh, coordinates with the fuses and recloses okay these extreme inverse over current relays are coordinated with the fuses and recloses means they are operated along with these okay so they are used for protection of alternators transformers and uh, expensive cables so classification of uh, relays based on function so relays can be classified depending on the depending on their function they are classified as induction type over current relays induction type reverse power relays distance relays differential relays and uh, translay scheme okay so we will discuss the uh, classification of uh, over current relays depending on function in the next class